بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of Ilm Institute News. Today I want to talk about a very touchy and controversial subject and that is homosexuality. Now, why is that such a touchy subject? As a society nowadays in America, we can look back at our past when it comes to slavery, when it comes to racism and bigotry towards African Americans. We can now look back at that and be appalled by it. We, we see that behavior and those ideologies as unacceptable, as horrific. Nowadays, we, we don't tolerate racism by and large as a society. So the reason why homosexuality is now su such a touchy subject is because the LGBTQ community, they have made their movement, their demand for rights synonymous with the civil rights movement. Nowadays, if you are against homosexuality, for example, you are essentially placed in the same category as somebody who is against civil rights. You are essentially considered a bigot, a racist, a horrific person. You are just as bad as somebody who is pro-slavery if you are against homosexuality in the eyes of many people because, as I've said, they have made the homosexual movement um, synonymous with the civil rights movement by and large. Now, how are they able to do this? Well, at the end of the day, it all comes down to our foundation as human beings, our perception of the world. Through which lens do we view the world? How do we determine what's right and wrong? Well, this channel is dedicated to viewing the world through an Islamic lens and re-emphasizing our Islamic values and our Islamic foundation. So, how does a Muslim view the world? Well, a Muslim believes that he was created to worship Allah. Meaning that we were created as human beings to do that which Allah has commanded us to do and to avoid what Allah has commanded us to avoid. That's our purpose in life. So any sort of subject, any topic that comes up, whether it be racism or homosexuality or anything else, we look at divine guidance and Allah, it's essentially an answer book where Allah tells us what's right and what's wrong. Now, that's how a Muslim views the world. How does a non-Muslim view the world? Well, I think most of the LGBTQ community and those who support them the most, they are essentially atheist or agnostic, they don't really get their values from divine revelation. So that being the case, where do they get their values from? Well, it's essentially based on human conjecture. It's based on their own intellect, their own opinion, their own feelings. They feel like being a homosexual is it's just the way you were born, the same as uh, somebody who is African American, for example. They, they, using their own intellect, their own conjecture, it makes sense to them. As Muslims, is that the way that we view these things? Well, let's see. Let's look at the Quran and Sunnah when it comes to racism. The Prophet wasallam it's, it's well known that he preached against racism. The Prophet wasallam he taught us that no human being is better or worse than another human being based on their ethnicity, but rather it is based on their piety, on their God consciousness racism in Islam is seen as unacceptable. Now, in Islam, is being a racist and being against homosexuality synonymous? Is it seen as being the same thing, which people nowadays, atheists and agnostics will claim it's the same thing? Well, the answer is no. Islam does not teach that. Homosexuality is a completely different subject. If somebody wants to fulfill their sexual desires, it is upon a man and a woman to get married. That is simply how we view the world. We view the world differently than somebody who is not a Muslim. And we believe that we actually have proof from the divine all-knowing creator. When people go to other than Allah for guidance, we see. Human conjecture, it changes all the time. Human beings are flawed. They change their mind. A few decades ago, homosexuality was considered a psychological disorder. Gay marriage was illegal. Now, today, it's the opposite. Whereas the all-knowing divine creator, the truth does not change. The all-knowing is never wrong. He doesn't have to sit there and change, oh, one minute, uh, this was wrong, oh, but now we changed our mind, we were wrong. Now, now this is the right answer. No, Allah knows everything. If Allah says something is right, it's right. If Allah says something is wrong, it's wrong. 
And as Muslims, we implement divine guidance. We don't rely on our own human conjecture. So that being the case, we are going to view the world differently. And this is why it's important. It's so crucial for Muslims to have a strong foundation because this is how we literally view the world. This is how we judge what is right and wrong. And if we don't have that strong foundation, outside sources, non-Muslims are going to try to change the way we view the world. They're going to try to make us leave Islam. They're going to try to re replace our divine guidance with their own human astray conjecture. So today specifically, I wanted to talk about a certain article that clearly shows how they are trying to, from a very young age, indoctrinate our children, our Muslim children, and all children to have a foundation which is disconnected from Islam. It's disconnected from Christianity and Judaism and divine guidance. They want to instill their values in children so that that's the foundation they have. And if they do that, when somebody comes across Islam and divine revelation, they're going to judge the divine revelation on these secular values that have been instilled in them. Whereas as Muslims, we do the opposite. We judge the world around us based on divine revelation. And unless we do a better job of instilling these values in ourselves and in our children, they're going to do their best to change the foundation, the very perspective of our children in the way that they view the world. And it's going to be anti-Islamic. All right, so to clearly demonstrate what I'm talking about, I want to read this, this news article that was just published Monday, the 4th of March, 2019. The headline reads, Birmingham School Stops LGBT Lessons After Parents Protest. Now look at this picture. You see this man reading a story to a bunch of Muslim children. And the caption says, Assistant Head Teacher Andrew Mofet with pupils at Parkfield Community School in Birmingham. So who is this man? I wanted to, to, to find out more about this individual, and I came across this article. Who is Andrew Mofet, one of three teachers shortlisted for World's Best Teacher Prize? It says, Mofet works in a 99% Muslim school in Birmingham where he promotes LGBT plus equality. So, it says here in the article that he is gay himself. So this is a man, he works at a 99% a Muslim school in Birmingham and he promotes uh, LGBT plus equality and he is himself a homosexual. And if we look at this picture, we can clearly see what they're promoting, how they are, are trying to indoctrinate Muslim children. Are they instilling an Islamic worldview? Are they giving them a strong Islamic foundation? No, they're doing the opposite. Now, this past year at the Islamic University, we studied... Orientalism and Christianization. There was a time when the Muslim societies were the most prosperous, they were the strongest, they were the most successful, the most educated, and we learned about how there were non-Muslim societies back then and they wanted to put an end to Islam. They didn't want it to spread and they wanted to actually invade Muslim countries and take over Muslim countries, however they weren't strong enough to do so. So. Instead of physically invading, what they did was they relied on psychological warfare. And the psychological warfare has not ceased to this very day. So for example, one of the tactics they would use is if they were going to write a book about Islam, for example. The book might be 85% true. The majority of the information in the book might actually be accurate. However, 15% would be poison. And this is a tactic that's used today. So if we look at this picture, look at the bulletin board in the background. We see this big title, Equality. And like I said, they're piggybacking off of the Civil Rights Movement. And you can see, what do they have? They have Pakistani, they have French, African, Chinese, European, Jamaican. So they're trying to say that ethnicities are equal. They're preaching against racism. And this is something that is true. This is something that coincides with Islam. But look what else they do. They say, atheist, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh. They're trying to say that religions are also equal. Is this something that Muslims believe? Do we believe that a Muslim who worships Allah alone is the same and equal to a Hindu who worships hundreds of gods? who prostrates to statues? No. But you can see how they are indoctrinating children to believe these things. 
So that if a day comes where a Muslim teaches his child, you know what, uh, we as Muslims, we disagree with the, the Hindu religion, with worshipping idols. These indoctrinated children are going to think, wow, that sounds racist. But they didn't stop there. You can see they also have straight, they have gay. So they are even bringing sexuality into this. These are small children and they are bringing sexuality into it. Is that something that Muslims believe? Did Allah teach us that being gay or straight is equal and the same as being Jamaican or Chinese? No, but this is what they're doing. They're trying to indoctrinate our children. And the indoctrination is against Islamic values. So if we continue reading the article, it says, a primary school that taught pupils about homosexuality as part of a program to challenge homophobia has stopped the lessons after hundreds of children were withdrawn by parents in protest. Now, look at the language that they use in the article. This is very calculated. This is them spreading an article, spreading news, and they are using certain language to influence you as a reader. So what does it say? Why are, they, why are they teaching about homosexuality? Well, it's part of a program to challenge homophobia. So they're basically saying, we're going to teach children about homosexuality to challenge homophobia. Well, there's another perspective. What if a, a religious Muslim wrote this article? They might say that a primary school was teaching pupils about homosexuality as part of an indoctrination program to lead these Muslim children away from Islamic values. Is the statement that I said any less true than the statement that they said? No. However, mine has an Islamic perspective and theirs has a non-Islamic perspective. So we have to be careful and notice these things. Notice the words that they use. It says, Parkfield Community School in Saltley, Birmingham has been the scene of weekly protests over the lessons which parents claim are promoting gay and transgender lifestyles. So they are promoting, um, allegedly, gay and transgender lifestyles to little kids. If we do not instill a strong Islamic foundation, they are going to instill a foundation promoting gay and transgender lifestyles. They are going to indoctrinate our children and give them a foundation that is not based on Islam, but rather it's based on their own un-Islamic values. Furthermore, it says on Friday about 600 Muslim children aged between 4 and 11 were withdrawn from the school for the day, parents said. So these are little kids and I applaud the Muslims for taking them out of school. And as a result of the Muslims protesting and standing up, the lessons came to an end. So this should show us the power that we have as Muslims. If you're going to take your deen seriously, we can actually protect our children. We can actually make a change. But we also need to understand that it's not just this LGBT program that we should be concerned with. Public school in general is not based on teaching our children Islamic values or giving them an Islamic outlook on life. We should be homeschooling our children. We should be establishing Islamic schools. We should make that a priority. There's not much difference between them being taught this LGBT stuff versus the other stuff that they're taught about in school that is going to take them away from Islam. This is just much more obvious to people who can remember a time when this sort of behavior was considered unacceptable. However, they are trying to indoctrinate our children from a very, very young age so that the next generation, they don't feel that way. And that being the case, when they are taught about Islam and they see that Islam preaches certain rules and regulations when it comes to sexuality, they are going to look at Islam as if it is racist or bigoted or unjust. So this is a very, very important topic, a very important issue that we need to take seriously and do something about. Now, before I close, I want to look at this other article that was just published, um, March 5th, 2019, and this is an opinion piece. It says, pupils shouldn't be denied LGBT lessons, whatever their parents say. And at first you're like, wow, how dare you try to tell Muslim parents that their kids should be forced to learn about this LGBT stuff? Well, the, the way that they get away with it is because this guy is a Muslim. We read here, growing up gay and Muslim, I know I would have benefited. 
Parkfield School should continue its No Outsiders program. So this is a tactic that they use. They try to use Muslims to push these anti-Islamic ideologies because many of us are influenced by other Muslims. A lot of us, instead of looking to the Quran and Sunnah, we will look to other Muslims and just assume that because they're Muslim that what they're preaching coincides with Islam. So for example, you see people like Linda Sarsour. She's one of the most famous Muslim activists in America. She preaches this LGBTQ ideology. You see Ilhan Omar. She does the same thing. They try to use Muslims as an effective way to preach these things and to influence other Muslims because Muslims who don't know any better are going to give it more legitimacy just because it's coming from another Muslim. But we have to remember, we have to understand, we don't get our values just from any old Muslim. We get our values from the Quran and Sunnah. And no matter what anyone says, if it doesn't coincide with the teachings of the Prophet wasallam, and the Quran, it doesn't matter who you are. You don't speak for Islam. You are not Allah. We do not change our deen. We do not change divine guidance based on any human being. That's how nations and religions of the past went astray. Instead of sticking to the divine guidance and the messengers and the prophets, they change things. So that does it for this episode, brothers and sisters. This is something that is very important. We have to make sure that all of us, not just our children, but first and foremost, the adults, us ourselves, we have to have a strong Islamic foundation. We have to protect our kids and make sure that we instill a strong Islamic foundation in them. That the lenses through which we all view the world is according to the Quran and Sunnah and our values. If we don't do that, then we are going to be led astray. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to lead us astray. They're trying to lead our children astray. And they're trying to indoctrinate them from a very, very young age so that they grow up with an anti-Islamic perspective of things. And there's one last thing I would like to mention. A while back, I made a video explaining homosexuality from an Islamic perspective. I tried to explain how Muslims view homosexuality in a way that would not come across as mean-spirited and disrespectful. So if you struggle with explaining this topic, then you might want to check out that video. It's in the description. Allah knows best. May Allah protect us. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.